Check out that cherry bob, absolutely stunning, isn't it? Today's video is all about this Scaper Line 90 that was originally created a few weeks ago by Michael Mickelson, a Danish aquascaper. And we created this for the Tropica YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to that. I'll leave a link in the description to the build video. And as you can see, the scape is looking magnificent right now. But we do want to make some changes. There are There is some room for improvement, I think. But before we talk about the changes, I just want to talk about the system as a whole. Starting from the top, this is the new Chihiros Light, the Vivid 2, I think, but it's the 10th anniversary edition. And very powerful, 140 watts or so. Completely controllable by Blue by Bluetooth. Very impressive unit, as you can see, bringing out those colors really, really well. The aquarium itself, an Awaze Scaper Line 90, measuring 90 centimeters by 45 by 45. That's three foot by one and a half by one and a half feet, holding around 180 liters or so. Uh, the cabinet, super high quality, has uh, really like in the uh, in the door here. We have some magnets for tools, filtered of course with the BioMaster 600. Has a slideable drawer here, so you can access the pre-filter to make maintenance really easy and overall very high quality system and a great way to showcase a beautiful aquascape as you can see. So let's talk about some of the uh, other technology on here. We have glassware. This is the Calaqua glassware, quite unique in its, in its formation there as it blows or the water flows in a downward pattern like this. That is really great for particularly promoting carpeting plant growth as the as the circulation comes down here around picks up the co2 bubbles here and then those co2 bubbles hopefully go all the way around the aquarium feeding the plants and uh, keeping them free from algae hopefully check out those cherry barbs probably the reddest cherry barbs i've ever seen Let's see if i can focus absolutely stunning added these yesterday and uh I think look absolutely amazing in here. We don't often see cherry bulbs, do we, in aquascapes? Let me know what you think. Good thing about cherry bulbs, it actually can go down quite cool temperature. You don't necessarily need a heater. In fact, we don't run a heater on this aquarium. It is very warm in here already. So the temperature is around 22, 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm not sure, that's probably 72, I think, Fahrenheit or so. Let's talk about some of the plants and then uh, we'll talk about the changes that we're going to make, some minor changes. I think we'll start off with the most prominent plant in my mind. This is the absolutely stunning Ludwigia inclinata cuba. Just look at that coloration. Absolutely magnificent, isn't it? This was actually discovered by Holger Windelov in Cuba, hence its name. And it's really lovely to see this now being produced by Tropica. It is an advanced plant, so it will require decent lighting to get that beautiful color and CO2 injection. Um, but it will reward you, as you can see, with that beautiful patterning and that beautiful colour. Let's get rid of these. Should have got the net out, really, before I started filming. It's a Lobelia mini leaf, that is. Let's have a look. OK, other plants we have. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll talk about. The brand new plants that are being released by Tropica very soon, in limited edition for now. Starting off with the Bucophalandra needle leaf love this really small book of philandra we do have some hydra there can you see that hydra on the on the wood I hope what i'm hoping is the fish is going to eat that at some point so this tank has been running without any livestock at all which has allowed that hydra to form unfortunately but check out that cherry bob absolutely stunning isn't it and let's see a bulbitis hudelotii there as a kind of main focal point plant. Uh, also, and coming soon from Tropica, we have the, as I say, the Book of Landra needle leaf. Then we have the Schismatoglottis in a, in a one, two grow. And just to compare it to a mature Schismatoglottis is there. And then back to the one, two grow variety. That's gonna, you can use that as an epiphyte plant and you can also plant it into the soil. So quite uh, an interesting plant there. Quite reminiscent of Anubius, I would say. Then we have the absolutely stunning, let's see if I can find it. Here we are. 
This is the new Cryptocry, new Rose Maiden, and you can just see the formation of the, the beautiful colours there on the leaf. And that's going to grow to probably 15, 20 centimetres tall, six to eight inches or so. Really, really beautiful crypt. And we've got the Altenanthra mini there, of course, that really beautiful red plant. Buca Philandra red, uh, Ranunculus inundatus. Not very often used this uh, uh, Ranunculus, but I think it's really interesting that that formation, the uh, texture of the leaves, reminds me of like little palm trees. Of course, we've got the mini hair grass there, Eleocaris, the Sicularis mini, almost forming a full carpet already. And do, don't forget to check out the full build video of this if you can on YouTube on the Tropica channel. So changes that we're going to make to this beautiful triangular composition. As you can see, classic triangle. Uh, Michael does love his triangle compositions as I do. But you can see this area here is very empty. So Michael's suggestion is that we replace the current plant in there, which is largely the Cryptocoryne willisii. That's not going to get much taller, so we're not going to get the triangular effect as hoped for. So we'll change that for hopefully, if I can find it in the greenhouse, some Echinodorus palifolius. If I can't find that, I'll find another suitably tall Echinodorus or maybe even a crypt. And then I'm going to probably make some minor adjustments around here. Not very happy with this area here. We have the Lobelia cardinalis mini. It's that plant there, quite new from Tropica. We've got some other crypt willisii there and then some ranunculus there. I think it's looking a little bit incoherent and not really adding to that overall aesthetic. So I think I'd like to take out this crypt here and then take these out and move the crypt into this area here. So we have a nice diagonal line of crypts running along here. Maybe add a little bit of um, crypt albedo brown just to mix it up a little bit. I do love that plant. So we'll go to the greenhouse now and see if we can find our Echinodorus palifolius. Okay, welcome to the Tropica greenhouse. Absolutely a huge facility here. And one day I'll give you a full tour. In fact, there will be a video coming in the future at some point from uh, Coralfish 12G. I spent the whole day with him filming here. So um, if you haven't heard of Coralfish 12G, big um, reef, reef bias YouTuber. I think he's recently done a video of Casey Neistat, in fact. Anyway, here we are. These are the Echinodorus palifolius, three pots. I'm going to put them in the rear left of the aquarium to replace the Willisii. Let's go there now. Okay, here we have our three pots of Echinodorus palifolius. Uh, re prepare them as usual, remove the plastic pot, remove the rock wool, take out the Willisii from this corner here, save that to replant this area along here, and it's going to look a lot better, hopefully. A couple of things to bear in mind with the Echinodorus palifolius, it does like to try to grow out of the water. And I'm wondering if this is Michael's intention. And it isn't very humid in here, so it might not work. The other option is to try to keep it growing submersed, in which case we just need to keep removing those leaves that are gonna to try to shoot to the surface. So I've had a chat with uh, another Michael, Mick, that maintains the, the aquascopes here when I'm not here and uh, we're going to just experiment and see how it works if it doesn't work we'll let you know we'll give you an update you know it's important to learn these things and le I'm learning all the time so I've never actually grown this plant before so I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops but yeah we'll prepare them now and uh, do what I said put them in their back right and replace the crypts along here so I've moved all of the cryptocurrency willisii and actually I've also removed the brand new Cryptocryne Rose Maiden. This is actually going to grow much taller than I anticipated, almost to the, to the surface of the aquarium originally. So I'm going to put that around here next to the Echinodorus and hopefully it's going to combine and make a beautiful variation in colours and textures. Uh, I've prepared, re-prepared the Willisii, so I've actually divided the larger portions up into more individual portions. I'll just show you how we do that. So we actually get three individual plants out of that group there. So altogether, there's probably 30, 20 or 30 individual crypts. And I'm gonna plant them quite tightly against each other to make a nice formation all the way along here. I think it's gonna improve the overall composition and coherence of the layout. So I'll do that now, starting off with a Rose Maiden at the back. 
And if the Echinodorus doesn't work out for whatever reason, the Rose Maiden will hopefully take over and establish itself to create a beautiful feature in the left hand corner of the tank. What I've done next is just remove some of the ranunculus from in front of this stone and that's going to allow me to plant some more Altanthera mini around this area. The ranunculus will grow too tall, you won't be able to see this stone. I'd really like to see this red extended along a little bit here. We have a tiny little bit of lobelia here on the end to act as a transition also from the mini hair grass to the Altanthera. So I've removed a couple of the stems of the Altanthera from, from the edge and then separated them up a bit more and then we can replant them. This is a really great process. You know, when we, when we originally set up the aquascape, by no means that's the final product. It's, it's important to note that it's always a, a continuing evolution of the scape. And as part of the joy, it's, it's enjoying the process of watching the aquascape develop, having a helping hand in that evolution, and then letting nature take its course. And the final is here. Altonanthra is actually a very interesting plant. In my mind, I've never actually kept it in the long term. I always find the leaves tend to get eaten by a mano shrimp or just die off in the longer term. It's actually, I don't, I don't find it a very, it's a beautiful plant of course, but never managed to keep it in the very long term. Let me know in the comments if you've had similar results or if you've kept Altonanthra for many months, even years. I'd be interested to know any top tips that you might have keeping this beautiful plant in the long term. Okay, so that's the aquascape refreshed as I wished. We removed the Crip Willisii, moved it to the front here, um, put some Echinodorus palifarius in the back, also with the Cryptocryne Rosen Maiden, and then we tidied up the Altanathra here, removed some of the Ranunculus, added a touch of Lobelia Mini, just as a transitional plant there. And now finally, what I'd like to do, whenever I've done any kind of fairly major maintenance in the aquarium, touch the plants, touch the soil. I'd like to do a big water change after that because what happens is, even just sort of by moving the plants here, we're dislodging waste organics, that floats around the aquarium, it can settle on other plants and eventually lead to potentially algae issues. And in my, in my view, the more water changes you do, the better, especially on a high energy aquascape like this with a lot of light, good amounts of CO2, lots of plant growth, lots of plant growth actually increase waste, plants produce waste, it's not just fish, so we need to dilute that waste ideally with water changes. This isn't like a, a low tech setup where you can get away with you know the, the old school kind of dirty tank method where we don't have to do water changes for months on end. I'm not a big believer in that style, especially if you want a beautiful looking aquascape like we have here. So frequent large water changes are the order of the day. And then if you if you're worried about you know sustainability and wasting water you can always collect that old water, water your house plants with it, water your garden with it, so it's not going to, to waste so much. So we'll do the water change now, uh, add our liquid fertilizers, and that's the scape ready for another week before its next maintenance uh, session. Unfortunately, I won't be here for that, but I will be here next month. I'm excited to give you another update then, potentially. Oh.